Good morning. What an honor it is to be with you today. I want to give thanks to your pastors for their invitation to join you at the close of summer. I also give thanks to your bishop for the amazing ways you extend the love of God far beyond the walls of this place. You are offering blessings to those in your community, in our state, and around the world. And that is no small thing. May God continue to bless your efforts as United Methodists, as Christians, as Jesus followers, as we seek to love this world and extend the arms of God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we take a minute to pause to remember those who this day are suffering from Hurricane Harvey's wrath. We pray for safety, and we give thanks that there are already United Methodists on the ground to provide assistance. This is the strength of our connection. So, oh God, we just pray that your mercy and love, which endures forever, will sustain those through this terrible storm. And, oh God, we pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, be inspired by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I love that you're doing this summer sermon series on movies because movies not only reflect culture, they help define it. As a pastor in San Francisco for 27 years, now you're not going to believe this, but, but I had to, well, well regular movie going was a part of my work as the pastor in San Francisco. <laughs> it was a tough job. Someone had to do it. But, but the reason was movies were huge. In, in, in San Francisco. I mean, people, people talked in movie metaphors. Oh, that was so Harry Met Sally. And measured their life moments like movie scenes. So I am going to preach on one of the greatest stories ever told. One that has captivated millions and, and brought together generations to discuss the moral and ethical values to be discovered in this book. Of course, I'm talking about Harry Potter. Now, for the two of you who might not be familiar with this cultural phenomenon, <laughs> Harry Potter is a series of fantasy novels turned into movies written by the author, British author J.K. Rawlings which tells the story of an orphan named Harry Potter who learns at the age of 11 he is a wizard. As a result, he's able to go to, the, to join other wizard children at a special wizard school known as Hogwarts, where the headmaster is Dumbledore. The books follow Harry and his two friends, Hermione and Ron, as they grow up and, and face the normal growing pains of adolescence. Friendships, exams, rivalries, and also those things that we who aren't wizards, that is, we who are muggles, don't face, like, like learning spells, mixing potions, and, and training all sorts of magical beasts. Now, the movie's central theme is a classic one, the struggle between good and evil, and the final climax is a confrontation between Harry and he who shall not be named, I told you he shall not be named. <laughs> there is so much about the Harry Potter story that contains theological and philosophical lessons. Today, I want to see what we can learn from the Nimbus 2000, which was, which was Harry's broomstick. Now, we mainly find Harry using his broomstick for what? Playing Quidditch. Quidditch. 
And it's basically a mode of transportation, able to get Harry from place to place. Now, I have to tell you, and I, well, I don't have to tell you, it's hard being a muggle. And it's hard being a muggle without a Nimbus 2000. It sounds so fantastic. Having something that could quite literally whisk you away from here to there. Something that could move you from one place to another, and all you have to do is hang on. Something that could take you out of this current life you're living and set you down in a brand new place. Wouldn't that be really great? I mean, because as much as we may want to get from here to there, as much as we might know we need to make a change in our situation, it seems as if the biggest thing we have to overcome in our life is inertia. Sometimes the, the most major obstacle that keeps us from changing our life situation, from living a, a full life, isn't due to forces beyond us, but those within us. I know in my own life, it's been my own doubts and fears, my own insecurities and worries. And I'm just going to keep it real with you my own laziness, and my own lack of willpower that's kept me from moving from here to there and to enable me to do what I need to do, what God calls me to do in this life. And I know I'm not alone in this. In the 35 years I've been a pastor, I have wept for more than one parishioner with whom I've sat with and listened to the pain of their lives. The realization that the life they're living is harmful, that the job they're in is far from satisfying, or the relationship they're in is not healthy. They need to get out. They need to move on. They have a, a vision of what things could be for them, but they are stuck. The discomfort of where they are is great, but the known is preferable to the unknown future, and they can't take that first step to making a change. Now, it's situations like that in which I wish I could hand out Nimbus 2000s to help folks make the needed move in their lives. It makes it seem so easy. Just hop on and get to where you need to go. But, you know, even the Nimbus 2000 is no easy answer. A Nimbus 2000 doesn't provide a smooth move to a new place. I know this for a fact because a couple of years ago, I rode a Nimbus 2000. Or was it a Nimbus 2001? Or maybe it was a fireball. I don't know. But um, I was at a meeting with uh, clergy women, United Methodist clergy women in Orlando. Now, as your pastors can attest to you, we United Methodist clergy, when we get together, we are so, like, we so follow John Wesley. We do not trifle away time. <laughs> we get up in the morning early, and we are in meetings until late at night. Well, this one, I'm, this one meeting, it was such an amazing thing. We actually had free afternoons. Oh, my gosh, that was, like, such a gift. What does one do with a free afternoon in Orlando, you might ask? Well, several colleagues and I decided we'd go to Universal Studios to visit the whizzing world of Harry Potter. Now, we clearly don't get out much because it was like an episode of clergy women gone wild. <laughs> and I blame it all on the butterbeer. We went on a ride called Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. How many of you have been on that ride? Some of you have, so you, you know what... This side, this side mainly. You, you're supposed to sit over here, apparently. You got the wrong tickets. So, so um, you know what I'm going to talk about then. We get to follow Harry, Ron, and Hermione on broomsticks. Well, let me tell you, it, I love amusement parks. Um, I grew up on, near Coney Island, so, whoa, I love it. Um, but it was one of the most heart-pounding rides I've ever been on. 
we twisted and we turned and we escaped all sorts of evils. At one point, I think I was upside down and I th thought I heard my seatmate call telling me, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold over and over, hold on. And it was driving me crazy because I, I started screaming at her, I am holding on, I am holding on. And then I realized it was Hermione in the speakers behind my head warning me that the ride was going to get even tougher. Well, let me tell you, I got off that ride, and I was drenched in sweat. My heart was racing far above my target heart zone, and I really thought I was going to toss my cookies. I guess not even a Nimbus 2000 can provide us with a smooth day to get from here to there. If anyone knows how hard it is to make a change and move towards the promise of the future, it was the ancient Israelites. They were held captive in a land that wasn't their own. Yet as much as they yearned for the promised land, they were afraid not just to break the physical bonds of slavery that the Egyptians had put them on them, but also the mental bonds of slavery they had put on themselves. They may have hated their time in Egypt, but they preferred to suffer the known reality than enter into the wilderness, the unknown, that stood between the slavery that they knew and the promised land that they longed for. So, so even when they, they followed Moses into the wilderness, they found that the wilderness wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Leaning on God's promises doesn't mean that life will be a bowl of cherries or even filled with milk and honey. The journey they had to take on their own two feet was filled with danger, and at more than one point they wanted to give up and return to Egypt and the slavery they had left. They cursed their leader. They cursed Moses. And they cursed God. But they kept on putting one foot in front of the other. The sun burned and the wind whipped. But still they kept putting one foot in front of the other. They felt like giving up more than once, but still they kept putting one foot in front of the other. They thought that God had abandoned them, but God aided them in the most surprising ways and emboldened them as they kept putting one foot in front of the other until finally, 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 the future's promise became reality and they entered into that land God had promised them. You too might be in chains of a bad job an unhealthy relationship, an addiction, damaging habits and choices. You know, you know, the promised land is out there somewhere, that life could be far richer and healthier, more whole and holy if you just make a change and begin to make some move to get there. But there's no Nimbus 2000 to magically get you there. Pills and alcohol might dull the stinking reality of your life, but can't help you make the change. Thinking you can remain where you are and just go through the motions and get by is nothing but a living death. Hoping another person will come and rescue you is the stuff of fairy tales. But it's not real life. Pretending things will get better on their own is as much a fantasy as a Harry Potter movie. But there is one who meets you exactly where you are. 
says, come, follow me. If you follow me, the road's still going to be rocky, but it will ultimately lead you to that which you seek, a richer life, a holy life. It will lead you to yourself, your very best self. Even when the gray days make you wonder why you ever stepped off in pursuit of this new life, Jesus says, I will be with you. Even when it seems as if everyone is against you and they want you to fail, I won't leave your side. Even when the pain and pressure of the new and unknown make you want to go back. I will remind you of what lies ahead. I will give you strength when you're weak, and I will give you hope when you all but want to give up. All you have to do, all you have to do, all you have to do is take that first step. And you can take that step to your new life because there is one who will always go before you. The same one who provided the Israelites with the divine presence of an angel will walk in front of you as well as pave a path for you. You can take that step into your new life because we know that our God works to break the chains of bondage wherever they may be found. So take that step. You don't have to be held back in your fear, but can find trust in God. You may have to get your feet wet, but take that step. It may get muddy at times, but take that step and and wade into the water. There are sisters and brothers who will hold your hand and steady your feet so you can make that crossing safely. So take that step. Take that step and take it now. Turn your back on whatever binds you and move forward. There is no less urgency for you than there was for the Israelites. You know the death and destruction that are on your heels. Now is the time to step foot, step off for the promised land. So take that step. Take it not as one who's running from something, but one who's running to something. Take it not as a a fugitive, but as the free man and the free woman you are that God desires you to be. Magic may be a, 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 a thing of fantasy movies like Harry Potter, but this I know, miracles happen. Miracles happen. This is history, and this is fact. Some events exist that are beyond any explanation science can offer, whether it's the, the parting of the Red Sea or experiencing the resurrection. Miracles happen. Whenever one of us trusts God enough to leave the chains that bind us and seek the promise of freedom, miracles happen. So take that step. Take that step. Take that step. Say it with me. Take that step. Take that step. Take that step and let a miracle, a miracle unfold in your life. Amen.